Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers review. In today's video, I'm taking an early look at a pre-production test shot sample of the Hasbro 3A G1 Optimus Prime. Now Optimus Prime stands approximately 16 inches tall, that's 40.64 centimeters, 30% die cast metal detailing and LED illuminated optics, Autobot badge, blaster rifle, and matrix chamber. In total, you will require eight times AG-13 batteries, which are not included in your purchase. Straight off the bat, you can see that this guy is boasting some of the Ashley Wood stylization. You see, I've got him here in kind of a wounded pose that he's limping across holding his chest where he's got attacked by Megatron. Uh, before I start the review, the pre-order on these closes April 30th, 2017, and these will be made to order. So <laughs> get your order in. Uh, I certainly will be. I was a bit dubious of this. I, I saw some of the early shots and I thought, hey, that is really really stylized and I really like the mass a zero one Optimus Prime, but having this in hand, messing about with it, albeit it's an early test shot and a lot of the articulation in the neck and joints, etc., they're all gonna be refined and tightened for the final product. Uh, it knocks the socks off it. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. It looks gorgeous. He's got that kind of bruiser feel to it. I really like that kind of Shogun look that he's got going on and that paint scheme is gorgeous. I thought it was going to be lighter but that's not necessarily a bad thing. This dark red really does suit him. It's very eye-catching. Really like that head sculpt on Prime as well. Like I said it's very Shogun Warrior. See what I mean about the uh, neck there? The neck joint is actually broken on the test shot. It's the same one that Vangelis had and it's been sent over to me. Uh, the head joint has now freed up though. We can now move the head up and down slightly. It's still a very stiff joint, uh, but unfortunately the neck is still super loose. But obviously that's going to be rectified on the final product, but oh man. <laughs> uh, the eyes do look a little bit dark, but we have some easy reach batteries going on here. We can slide this off. It's just a slide on, slide off, which is nice. It makes such a change to have accessible batteries. Uh, and the same goes for the shoulder panel with nice, clean access. And the same again for Prime's rifle. Now, me personally, I really like the paint applications and the detailing on this figure. I know we're likely to get comments from one sixth collectors or customizers saying, oh, this could be done better, this could be done better. But for those who don't customize their figures, straight out of the package, this guy has got some fantastic battle wear and damage to him. And he really does look like he's been battling with the mighty Megatron. Now, Prime does come with a couple of accessories. Firstly is the blaster that we've already touched on. The battery section is at the back here. We have a peg, much the same as what we would get with a Masterpiece style figure. We get a nice ball mounted Energon axe, which we pop the hands off and we just pop this on the socket. It's made of a nice translucent plastic. It's got a fair bit of heft to it and it's got a nice Autobot logo sculpted on either side of the axe. Uh, the next accessories, at least I assume they count as accessories, are actually magnetic wheels and we also have some magnetic gas tanks to go alongside. You may wish to have this kind of slim, streamlined look to his legs or if you're more of a classics fan, you can just stick those magnetic sections on and then come. There's a magnet inside here but there's also a small location tab on the side here which allows it to locate correctly into place. Now, although Prime is in his test shot phase, I am extremely impressed with the articulation. As I've already mentioned, the neck is considerably loose, but it does have a tilt forwards and backwards, left 
and right. Now on top of that, we do get a ball jointed head. Now the ball joint is extremely stiff at the moment and difficult to maneuver. Uh, but again, that does go up and down and tilt to the side for some quizzical posing, which I mean is nice because our heads do work independently to our necks. Now the shoulders are on a butterfly joint, so they can come all the way forward, which is fantastic for holding his rifle. We can lift them out to the side and it caves in to that shoulder there on a nice soft ratchet. It goes up and down on a friction joint. We've also got this kind of funky joint in here which allows us to shift the shoulder up and down as well. There's so much range. We have an upper bicep rotation, again on a nice soft ratchet. And we have a gorgeous double jointed elbow and a nice clean elbow at that. There's nothing worse than having a very ugly double joint on your elbow and that's nice and clean. Going down to the wrists, we get rotation. We actually get some in and out motion on those wrists as well, which is great when he's holding his rifle because it allows us to get a very natural pose on the wrist. The fingers are articulated at a ball joint at the knuckle, two points on each finger. All the fingers are different lengths, which is fantastic because I absolutely hate fingers all being the same length. And we can slightly spread the fingers as well. It's not a huge amount of spread, but it's enough for me. There's a ball joint on that thumb as well as one, two points of articulation. Prime's torso can tilt left and right. We've got a upper rotation on the top of that chest. We get the lower rotation we get a rotation at the waist. We have one, two skirts on the legs, and there's also a drop in the legs. It's on a really tight ratchet, which allows us to bring the legs all the way up and all the way back. And that's about as far as we're gonna come out to the side. I would have liked more range coming out to the side, but just the nature of that beast there. It's a big, chunky joint. And uh, although we've got this up and down motion, just because of where it's located inside there, we can get some rotation on there. It does kind of move independently to this section as well. Uh, it's nice to have that up and down motion though, to get some real depth in those thighs. Coming down to the legs, I'm gonna take the gas tank off while I'm doing this because it repeatedly drops off. So this is a pre-production sample. It's been passed around the houses and I think my magnets are starting to go because they're not really staying on as they should. So let's take that off for now. You see this leg section here, as we bend this leg, this section actually caves in, which allows us to get an incredibly deep bend on those legs, which is fantastic for posing. We get some ankle rocker left and right, some pivoting there. We got a nice deep ball in there and we also get a fantastic ratchet on those big die cast toes. And of course, let's not forget his backpack jetpack, which can ratchet upwards as well. <laughs> So for a big guy, he can pull off some pretty nifty poses. One of my favorite things to do with this guy is to put him in that walking pose. It's such a natural look for him. The way those shoulders shift up and down and front and backwards, and you've got so much range on those knees and feet. It just looks and feels so right. And the same goes for him holding his ax. Now, the ball joint section on his wrist there, uh, the axe, the sheer weight and length of that axe actually makes the ball joint drop down slightly. But again, that's something that can be rectified with the final product. But just look how menacing he looks. I really do feel this guy's got a great balance of G1 likeness and that Ashley Wood flair. As previously mentioned, this product does take eight AG13 batteries. So let's see what those batteries do. Pressing this section here on the gun, lights the LED inside up and off. We can push down 
on the smokestack, which allows the Autobot logo section here to illuminate. And by sliding this section here across, we light up both the eyes and the matrix, which we can turn on and off by pushing in and out. The matrix itself can be removed. And we have some nice detailing there on the inside of the matrix chamber. And again, incorporating those shoulder joints and this upper torso swivel, we can get a nice dynamic pose. Place the matrix back in the chamber. And there we go. Prime is lighting their darkest hour. I mean, if I was to pick fault, uh, maybe in my opinion, the Matrix is a little bit small. I mean, DX9's Galvatron, he, I mean, he had a Matrix that wasn't far off that size. Here he is for a quick scale comparison alongside the Weizhang MPP-10 and of course the Hasbro MP-10. He's definitely the big boy, isn't he? And you can just see just how gorgeous that red is that they've used. It's almost like a cherry bomb kind of red. It's very vibrant. Incorporating it with this kind of gunmetal grey and this really kind of degraded, beaten up blue, he really does look the part. Now I would compare him alongside my 3A Movie Optimus and Megatron and Bumblebee etc. But unfortunately they are all up in the loft. My wife is away for a few days and I can't climb up in the loft with one leg. Uh, so uh, you do have my deepest apologies. I had to get this review up as quick as I could because I have to send this product on to the next reviewer and they have a very short time frame. So unfortunately I can't get the rest of the 3A figures out for a comparison. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, out of all of the figures I have, this and maybe Megatron are my favorites, I think. Megatron just because he looks so good. The Optimus Prime is amazing, but this guy, the G1 Optimus, it is something about him. I think it's just how dynamic he is, and it's just that kind of slender, I think it is kind of that Shogun feel to it. It, it really is fun to mess about with. I've found myself repeatedly picking this figure up, putting him in different poses, taking pictures. I, I am genuinely really excited to have this guy in hand and having spoken to the wife we are going to budget <laughs> oh, i've got to sell a few things but i'm, I'm going to order this whether you use places like uh, babalanche or hobby link japan it's entirely up to yourselves but i highly recommend you getting this guy if you like optimus prime if you believe a transformer can be a transformer even though it doesn't transform then i highly recommend this figure for you. It's not cheap, so it's not going to be available to all collectors, but if you can save for it, if you can purchase it, I highly recommend it. You will not be disappointed. Make sure you check out Vangelis and Pure's video. They've already shared their thoughts. And until next time, from myself and the Hasbro and 3A G1 Optimus Prime, thanks for watching. Uh, goodbye.